right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Eastman's Engineering. We're going to uh, go over a PLE practice test. This particular test is from 2009. Uh, it does feature a couple of topics that may be slightly outdated, but overall concepts are the same. In particular, you'll notice that questions that are related to electrics and robotics feature uh, Fisher Technic parts as opposed to um, VEX parts, uh, but the concepts, again, are very, very similar. So we're going to go over all those questions and talk about right answers and discussions when we need to. All right, so question number one. Uh, which of the following engineering achievements occurred first? All right, development of a catapult, development of stone bridges that incorporated wood stringers, a water wheel, or methods that can create fire at will? And the answer to this question, even though we, uh, it's something we haven't discussed too much, is actually D, water wheel. All right. At will. Number two, compared to engineering technology, engineering blank at the college level. Does it require more electives, co-op experiences, focuses on teamwork, or focus on theory? What do you think? Theory. Teamwork is actually correct. Yes. That's why in a lot, a lot of the PLTW classes you take, there's a greater focus on teamwork. I'm going to use my highlighter actually now. It'll be easier. Okay. Question number three, the blank drawing shown in figure one provides a three-dimensional pictorial representation of an object. Uh, the surface features uh, or the axis of the object are drawn at equal angles for the horizontal. What kind of uh, drawing is this? You should remember this from IED. It's isometric. Yes. Okay. Question number four, blank is freehand drawing, which is done without the use of drafting equipment. Which of those techniques is it? Sketching. Sketching. Good. All right. And the last question on this page, uh, the image shown in figure two represents a what? Bar chart, bar chart, pie, pie chart, line graph, or spreadsheet? That is a bar chart, ladies and gentlemen. If, the, if frequency was the y-axis, what kind of chart would it be? If frequency was the y-chart, we also could say what? It's a histogram. We also could say that too. Okay. All right. Next page, number six. Uh, what is design? Is it a plan or process used as a guide to develop and solution of problems, a tool used by engineers, computer software program to generate three-dimensional models, or a method of generating ideas through unrestrained, spontaneous group discussion? Answer is A, a plan or process. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Question seven. The gear tray in figure three consists of 40 tooth, 20 tooth, and 30 tooth output gear. If the input gear rotates 10 times, how many times will the output gear rotate? All right, so what kind of, what, what kind of uh, answer we get here with this? Well, let's keep in mind that the ratio of the number of teeth is, is, definitely, uh, rel yeah, is definitely related to the RPMs. Uh, and I believe if my memory serves correctly, it's D in over D, uh, D out, which is the, or N in over N out, excuse me, not N, uh, you write, write numbers on that. Number of teeth, since that's what we're presented with. It's the output gear over input and out over and in, and then the RPMs of the out input gear of over the RPMs of the output gear. Okay, I should use uh, I should use a different signal for that. I should use the tau, but that's okay. All right, so based on that information, the 40 the uh, 40 tooth gear is on the bottom. Output gear, is, in this case, is the 30-tooth 30, 30 gear. And we know that the input gear rotates 10 times. So what would we get for x here? That, well, if we do cross-multiplication, right, that's 30x equals 400. And when we divide that, that's 400 over 30, which means x equals 13.3. So, I did. I did that in my head, yes. All right, 13.3. 37 years of practice, Matthew. <laughs> All right, question number eight. In a third class level, the distance from the effort to the fulcrum is blank the distance from the load to the fulcrum, okay? In a third class level, where is the effort? Is it in the middle or is it on an edge? Well. In a third class lever, the effort is actually in the middle, okay? So the third class lever, the effort's in the middle. It means the distance from the effort to the fulcrum is less than the distance, or it actually could be equal to as well. could be equal to, I said say that, right? Yeah, so that should be choice B. Because it, it could be equal. You could have the effort 
the same. Well, no, I take that back. You know what? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. It's definitely less than. It's definitely because then it's not a lever if it's equal. So, all right, less than. All right, question number nine. The wheels on a bicycle have a 10 inch radius. If the bike must travel exactly 2,000 inches, how many revolutions are required? Assuming there's no sliding or slipping. All right. So in this problem, you need to know the circumference of the wheel. So if the radius is 10, that means that the circumference is 2 times pi times 10, which is equal to 20 pi, which is approximately equal to 62.8 inches. Right, with a 10 inch radius. So that makes sense, 62.8. Now, if that is the circumference of the wheel, that means one revolution equals 62.8 inches. So if you're traveling 2,000 inches, if you just divide 2,000 divided by 62.8, that will be approximately 314. Yeah, all right. So 314 revolutions on that, okay? And look it up, I'm checking my math, hang on. Two, three. No, you know what? It's 31.4. I missed a decimal point. All right, 31.4. Doing it live, folks, doing it live. All right, yeah, 31.4, okay? Because every time you turn one inch, one revolution, 62.8 inches, yeah. All right, uh, number 10. Oh, it looks like question 11 got cut off there. Um, if a simple machine requires effort force that is less then the force of the load being moved, the simple machine exhibits mechanical advantage. All right. Uh, we lost question 11 there. Let me pause and get that back. Okay, question number 11 is just a straight up, what kind of simple machine are you utilizing here if you use a screwdriver to pry open a can of paint? By doing that, you're using a lever to do that. Okay, so the choice there would be a lever. If it's choice B, if I remember correctly. Oh, there it is. It did, it did show up. It just came and got off the page there. There it is. Look at that. All right. It was there for a second. Let's look at the figure down. There it is. Okay. Just expand the page. It's got choice D. Choice D. Okay. Next question. If you've got a pulley system showing at figure five lifting a 50 pound load, what is the minimum effort that must be applied to the system? All right. Well, in this particular system, since the effort is being applied here, all we have to really do is count the number of strands that are between that and the load. Okay, so in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six strands, which means the mechanical advantage is six. So the output force, F out over F in, right? That equals, since you are, you are trying to figure out how much you're inputting, 50 divided by what equals 6, okay? So in this case, the answer here, you would just have to switch this, 50 divided by 6, and you would get 8.33 pounds. So that's the minimum amount of effort force required there. All right. Now. No, you know what? No, this strand doesn't count. All right. No, that strand doesn't count. Because that strand doesn't count, and that means the mechanical advantage is actually five. The reason why when we're pulling on this, this one right here, this part here does not count for the mechanical advantage because you are pulling in the direction of the load, um, or the direction opposite the load, excuse me. Um, forgot about that. So that's the direction you're pulling. That's the direction the load is going. So because of that, this strand right here does not count. So it's one, two, three, four, five strands, which means the mechanical advantage is actually five, not six, which means that... 50 divided by 5, the answer is actually 10. You know, a little bit less, a little bit more, excuse me, but that, that would be the answer there. Okay. If, if the pull was arranged in such a way that you'd be pulling up, then you, would get, then you would count that strand. All right. Question number 13. Which of the following methods of heat transfer explains why air near the ceiling is warmer than the air near the floor in an enclosed room? And the reason for that is convection. Number 14, oil is used in industrial hydraulic systems. Why? Because of a few different reasons, but the one that's up here is B. It does not compress. Number 15, according to Pascal's law, a force that is exerted on a fluid will be transferred blank against the walls of the fluid's container. 
The answer is equally. Number 16, electromotive force is another term for voltage. We say force and voltage are often synonymous with each other. Uh, number 17, if you've got a motor in figure 6 and it draws 0.9 amps and provides 100 ohms of resistance, how many volts would you get on the multimeter? Well, you recall that I equals V over R. So if you're looking for voltage, that means that you would use V equals I times R. So you would just do 100 times 0.09, and you would get 9. 9 volts. Number 18, which of the following digital control devices processes the input information from sensors? All right. In here, that would be a microprocessor. All right, next question. Number 19. Now, this is, again, this is sort of an irrelevant question. But if you take a look at this diagram, this is what's called a limit switch. And you may remember prior knowledge, prior exposure to Fisher Technics. Um, depending on how you wire it, the switch is either normally open or normally closed. There's a diagram on the side here that indicates that the switch here is defaulting right here. So because it is, this is normally a closed switch, so technically this would be C. All right. If it was wired to 1 and 3, then it would be normally open. That means that right now, without it being pressed, it's closed, but if you press it, it'll become open. All right. Uh, number 20, the difference between an open and closed loop system is open loop systems do not have feedback. Number 21, which of the following input devices can be used to help a computer identify the color of a glass marble? The answer here would be a um, photoresistor. Light sensor, it's another term for a light sensor. All right, in figure eight, a blank force has the same effect on a body as two or more forces acting concurrently on that body. That dashed uh, vector right there is called the resultant. So if you applied F1 here, F2 here, it's the same as if you applied 152 pounds in that direction. Number 23, force and velocity are examples of vector quantities. They have direction as well as magnitude. 24, when the sum of the forces and moments in a structural system equals zero, that system, to be, that system is to, said to be in a state of static equilibrium. Number 25, the truss system shown in figure 9. How many reaction forces would replace the roller joint if a free body diagram of the truss was drawn? Notice it's only talking about the roller joint. So in that case, the answer would be just one, one reaction force. Question on here, moment of inertia is a cross-sectional property that gives the engineer an indication of the stiffness of a particular shape. Its value can be used to A, calculate the amount of deflection that occurs in structural beams, B, calculate the weight, C, locate the centroidal axis, or D, describe the linear relationship between stress and strain. Well, number 26, you, it, you would think that the answer is A, but the problem with that is you need more than just the moment of inertia to do A. So really, the only thing that really helps you in here is, um, is it right there? Number is, well, that. Locate the central axis of the structural shape. That's not going to help you with moment of inertia. So, yeah, the only one that really makes the most sense here is choice A, even though you do need more information to do it. It does allow you to calculate the deflection that occurs in structural beams. All right. Number 27. We have 40 questions here. Uh, which of the following materials is best known for its resistance to extreme heat? That is C, ceramics. 28. Figure 10 shows a 100-pound normal force applied to a 12-inch by 10-inch diameter cylinder. What is the resulting compressive stress on the cylinder? Well, this is a pressure question. Pressure equals force over area. So because that equals force over area, it's 100 pounds divided by, well, the area, that's a circle, right? The base of that is a circle. So you're going to do pi times Diameter is 10, so the radius is 5 squared. That means it's going to be 100 divided by 25 times pi, which is going to be slightly greater than 1 in this case. So we're going to say answer choice D.
for that. 1.27 uh, PSI. All right, number 29, which of the following manufacturing tools is used almost exclusively to machine holes in parts? That would be a drill press. 30, which of the following manufacturing process is used to form a piece of metal into a predetermined shape through the application of pressure? That is B, forging. 31, a PO teacher keeps statistics on the success rate of her students' performances with marble sorter projects. Oh, that's a throwback right there. The number of successfully sorted marbles from the groups is 1, 2, 7, 9, 8, 8, 10, 5, 9, and 9, which of the following represents the median of the data set. To do the median, you have to sort the data. So you have to do these in order. So 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 10. I think I got them all. all right? So the median, this, this is a 10 number data set. So the median would be between the fifth and sixth values. So it would be right here since both values are exactly the same. It is B, 8. However, if these numbers were different, like if this was 7 and this was 8, you would say the median is 7.5. You have to average the two. All right. Uh, oops, I skipped the question. Back up. Hmm? Got the Dallas Caliper question. This should be a gimme. Hopefully, you've read enough Dallas Calipers in your life. Uh, Dallas Caliper in figure 11 is showing a measurement of how many inches. Well, it's 0 0.7 because it's past the 7 here, not quite to the 8. And then this dial is reading at the point at the 38 on the on the dial here, so that's C 0.738. All right, now the next question, next page, and the last page here. Uh, when a part is stressed only within its elastic region, it will blank when the stress is removed. And we talked about this in this marking period. It will be returned to its original sh size and shape. 34, a material is capable of considerable plastic deformation would be, for, would, would be referred to as a ductile material. 35, four common causes of product failure are poor design, poor construction, poorly communicated operating instructions, and blank. Which of these? Insufficient power supply, electronics failure, operator error or misuse, or excessive mathematical analysis. Uh, the answer is not D, it is C, operator error or misuse. 36, blank provide a means for analyzing documented events such as engineering disasters and the ethical dilemmas associated with them. Case studies is the answer to this question. 37, blank is the study of motion without reference to the forces that caused the motion. That is B, kinematics. 38, a projectile is any moving object upon which the only active force is gravity. Choice D. Number 39, neglecting air resistance, the horizontal component velocity of a projectile that moves along the path of a parabolic curve will C, remain constants. If there was air resistance, it would certainly go down little by little. And last question, neglecting air resistance, which of the following trajectory angles measured from the horizon will result in the greatest horizontal distance traveled by the projectile. Well, the angle that maximizes it is 45. So which of these angles is closest to 45? The answer is B, 40. All right. And that concludes this review. Uh, there should be another one posted later on uh, today or tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.